Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the, the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm just talking about um, a few of the things I wish I knew about being a developer before I became a developer. One of the biggest things I think would be that when I first started developing, I thought that I could, I, I thought I should be a further along than I was. Like at any time that I looked back on my career, I, I think that like a constant was that I always thought that I should be further along than I was. So one of the reasons for that though would be because I actually jumped around from one thing to the next all the time. So I'm not even talking about jumping around from one framework to the next or even from one language to the next because I certainly did that a lot and I think that that doesn't really get you anywhere because really programming, and this is one thing you learn real quick, is that it's not really about the syntax of the language that, that you're dealing with or, or even some of the built-in functions that uh, that the language has or the libraries and things like that. A lot, a lot of the times, um, even if it doesn't have a, a strong core library, you're just going to interface to some other uh, third-party library kind of tacked on thing. So, um, basically the languages are similar, but the problems are always different and, and the problems always require a pretty unique, um, solution. And, uh, in this industry, like we always try to come up with, you know, these one size fits all solutions to, to all of our software problems. And, uh, I think we've pretty much seen that like all the software methodologies that we've, we've tried. Uh, I, I think we pretty much all know now that like there is no one size fits all solution for every team, um, for every business, for every programming problem, uh, and, and for and for so many different reasons. I mean, I, anybody who's been in this industry for a long time just knows that every team is different. Uh, people come from different backgrounds. Like if you're working for a .NET shop or a Java shop, um, nobody cares that you created a. Um, you know, a static site website with something like Next.js or something like that. Like, nobody cares. <laughs> if you want to impress somebody, you can, like, sprout some wings off your back and, like, fly around from one cubicle to the next. But other than that, like, if you're working for a .NET shop or, like, a Java shop or something like that, you better come up with prototypes and things like that um, of things that the company's you know, actually going to be able to use. Like, um, one of the things that I wish I would have known a little bit better when I was first getting started is that, like, um, when, when you're first getting started, a lot of the times you're brought in because you know something new, um, you know, like, whether it's like a UI library, like React or, or Vue or something like that, you might get brought on. Um, and you might work with other developers, maybe some older developers or developers that, that come from, uh, different backgrounds and, and at times I'm like well how do they not know this or that and um, well, well the reason is is because they come from like a 20, 20 year uh, COBOL background um, or uh, or a Java or a C sharp you know strictly C sharp or Java background so yeah they don't know JavaScript as well but um, you should always be very very careful because you know they, they have a ton of knowledge and, and other things uh, assuming they've been in the industry for any length of time so another thing too is that I wish I would have known that a lot of times it's about who you know and not about as much uh, of what you know. So if you don't have a lot of who you know, then you probably need to have a lot of what you know out there. And if you, if you know what I'm talking about, that means that um, you probably have to have some portfolios out there. You have to have some websites or games or mobile apps or whatever it is that you're trying to do and whatever you're trying to prove. Um, but you're going to see that, like, you know, there, there are certain decisions made and there are certain, um, you know, people that get brought in and they bring their own people in. And it's not necessarily about um, sometimes, you know, on that particular project or whatever, like, you're going to have people that, that, you know, that know and trust people. So the longer you're in this industry, hopefully you have quite a few people that know and can vouch for you and things like that. And um, that's that's really, really important. And that, that goes into, like, you know, just don't be a dick. Don't Don't talk behind people's back. Um, you have to look at the overall picture of, of, you know, I think of any p particular individual, no matter what field you're in, whether it's programming or not, but like if you're working with somebody and, uh, and programming is always a different type of thing. Like 
For instance, um, I can go to a different team and I could be working on, a, you know, from a PC to a Mac, or I could be working in a Linux environment or something like that. So um, there's people that have those types of skill sets and, and maybe you don't know that when you're working with them on some sort of like you know java java javascript project or some java project or something like that like um my point is is that like you just don't know everything about somebody uh by a specific project that they're working on so um it's i guess what i'm saying is like it, it you definitely you need to make sure that you're always having proper uh, building proper business connections and, and, and social networking. Um, you know, make sure that if you're not being a dick, then you're going to be, I think you're going to be okay. Um, but like nobody wants to work with somebody who, um, bad mouse, um, you know, somebody behind their back or something like that. So I would just say that, you know, that happens a lot in office, in office politics and, um, and that's something that, like, if I could go back and, like, tell myself, like, do not get involved in any sort of gossiping, um, you know, don't talk about what this person said or, you know, what, you know, about this or that. Like, I'm telling you, like, that happens and, like, it's easy to get caught up in that when you have, like, a, a lot of, you know, friends in the office place and people know each other and, like, um, rumors start getting spread and, like, you just don't want to be involved in something like that because that, that can actually turn into some, you know, some it can turn into a big deal and, um, you know, people's reputations are like the most valuable thing you can have. So, um, you know, protect your own and protect, protect other people. So, um, that's like a, I think a solid piece of advice. I wish I could go back and, and tell myself just to not ever get involved in like gossipy type situations and, um, and never really try to, you know, judge a book by its cover. And when I mean, what I mean by that is mostly just, you can't judge one developer based on one project. Here's another good one. Um, you're always working on stuff that isn't necessarily stuff that you would work on by yourself. So if you're working for a business and you're solving business problems, you rarely have control over much of the project, if it, if any at all. Um, and you just have to kind of get on board with that. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of indie developers, a lot of us, you know, startup entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs and all, all of us out there, you know, we, we um, sometimes get into this coding gig thinking that we're going to do some sort of startup or something. Um, but the truth of the matter is like 85% of all the code you write is going to be for production code that's already out there and you're going to be writing unit tests and um, doing a lot of problem solving and debugging and things like that. So uh, that's where the majority of your time is going to be spent. And then there's also a lot of business politics too. So you'll be working on projects and things like that and all of a sudden like there's 180s and, and 360s and like, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a wild ride sometimes. So as a... Um, as somebody who who came in, you know, off the streets, obviously, into like a actual corporate production software environment, th that is something that like, I, I should also touch upon, like, I thought that everybody, like, in any sort of production code environment out there for any sort of major company, I thought that it was always going to be like, like elite status, like elite programmers. Um, and there was definitely some, you know, self doubt that creeped in. And if I would have, if I could go back and like tell my former self, like, dude, you got nothing to worry about. Like most of the, the developers out there, like, uh, th th they, they struggle just as much as anybody else. So like, um, that is one thing that the, the playing field is very level. Um, you're going to have super elite rock star programmers, but they're rare and, uh, and they do stand out, but they're the ones writing books and, um, you know, they have huge consulting companies and, uh, and then you have, you know, elite programmers that work at companies and those companies like pay them, you know, quarter million dollars a year or more, um, depending on the size of the technology company. And, and I'm not even in that level. Uh, yeah, I say I'm not even like, yeah, I'm not in that level at all. But, uh, <laughs> um, and then you have like the run of the mill, like everyday programmer. And that's like, that's where most people are. Um, so as a young, as a young developer, I wish I would have known a, a little bit more, basically, don't, you know, don't be a dick and, uh, and never, never, you know, talk behind somebody's back. Um, that's something that you, you never want to do in any workplace, but you're going to work with people sometimes that don't know what they're doing. Um, and, and then sometimes you may not know what you're doing. Um, but hopefully, you know, that doesn't persist, but <laughs> like you don't have to be a rock star programmer to be, successful in this industry um your work product just has to speak for itself and and most of the time it's not about syntax and um 
core programming concepts and things like that. It's about just like assembling parts. Uh, so that's, that's something I wish I would have learned early on as well, that it was less about the syntax and more about assembling of parts and like, and, and people build up that knowledge over time. Another thing in this industry, like you will work with some of the most arrogant people in the world, but I would say salary is definitely not the most important thing um, by far. Like over time, as I, be, as I grew older, uh, I've been in this industry for 10 years or so. Like salary is, is definitely not the most important aspect of any sort of job that I'm considering anymore. And um, I think one of the things that, that I wish I could know back then more, uh, if I could go back and tell myself, is it, definitely, you know, have a life at all costs. Um, so anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's really all I got. So have a good day and make sure you have a good 2019.